This trophy was won by Fighter Squadron 84 of the United States aircraft carrier Independence, just returned from a five-month tour of duty off the coast of Vietnam. The trophy was presented to the squadron by one of these men. What is your name, please? My name is Robert Weinstein. My name is Robert Weinstein. My name is Robert Weinstein. Only one of these gentlemen is the real Robert Weinstein. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle on To Tell the Truth. To Tell the Truth is brought to you this evening by Ben Gay, the ointment with radiant action for the relief of aches and pains. And now, here's your host, Bud Collier. <laughs> Thank you very much. A uh, warm welcome to you all. Welcome again to To Tell the Truth. Good evening, panel. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, tonight, we are especially happy because tonight we begin our 10th year of To Tell the Truth. And we want to thank you, our audience, for making this possible. Thank you. <laughs> panel, are you ready to start another 10 years? Uh, indeed. <laughs> Please open your envelope then and follow along as I read. I, Lieutenant J.G. Robert Weinstein, am better known to the 4,500 officers and men of the United States Aircraft Carrier Independence as Red Wine. Under that name, I gained local fame, if not fortune, as the one and only newscaster on WIND, <clears throat> the closed circuit television station aboard the ship. Although I had absolutely no previous background in broadcasting, I soon discovered that news alone does not a TV station make. So I started filling out our seven-day-a-week schedule with live jazz and rock and roll groups, an opera singer, feature films, a telephone question and answer program, and a quiz show. <clears throat> the quiz show proved to be the most popular. As producer, director, and star, I had to think up all the questions myself, as well as MC the program on which teams representing various units aboard ship competed against each other. On the final program, I presented the winning team from Fighter Squadron 84 with this trophy. It has two marble bases, four gold columns, an angel of victory, four eagles, topped off with the Greek god of wisdom. I bought it in Japan for $15. <laughs> Signed, Robert Weinstein. <laughs> Now, panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Lieutenant Robert Weinstein. We'll start the questioning with Orson Bean. Orson? Thank you. Uh, Lieutenant mm -hmm. number three, now you have a potential audience of 4,500 viewers, is that correct? Yes. Now, is this cut down by a certain <coughs> amount of men that have to be on duty and uh, up on board and up on deck? Oh, yes, a certain number of men have to be on watch. N number one, do you have any rating mm -hmm. system so you can figure out, like, uh, how well you this do? this is a monopoly. It's a monopoly. They have nothing else to watch, right? right? Number one, again... Why did the Navy make you a television star? Why not? I mean, that requires training. Why didn't they make you a dentist or something? <laughs> that doesn't require any training. I was asked to volunteer. I've been in the Army, but I, some of those guys... I, I was asked to volunteer. You were asked to volunteer. All right. Number two. Now, you're the producer and the star and the director. Do you mop yes, up the sir. studio afterwards, too? No, or? sir, I do not. You have lackeys for that? Minions, do you? I have men for that, yes. Now, do you act like a star? Is it going to your head? Yes, indeed, I do. You do? <laughs> <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Uh, number two, what else do you do? I am the dispersing officer. What's that? I take care of the uh, travel advances and the pay. Number three, what else do you do? I'm special services officer. Did you also, were you also asked to volunteer for this? No, I was told to volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> number one, uh, how long do you broadcast? Six hours. Six hours every day? Every day, seven days a week. And this is TV? Yes, closed circuit television. Number two, where do you get the opera star from? He was one of our officers. And he's a good singer? He was one of our officers. Tom <laughs> 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 Poston. <laughs> wow. Well, number uh, three, uh, why red? <laughs> 
I mean, I can see why number two might be red, but number three, your hair isn't red. Why red wine? Oh, uh, that's the name I assumed. Oh, oh, they didn't know who you were. You couldn't, you never came on the camera so that they could see you? No, I came on the camera, but I didn't appear in uniform. Oh, I see. Number two, uh, do you know what, as a guy that hangs around singers and musicians, what, do you know what an axe is? What do they call an axe? No, sir, I don't. You, number one, uh, did you, was your red uh, just a uh, gnomed uh, TV? It's a bit of a shortening of Weinstein, red wine. I see. Well, number one, how did you find the questions that you, that you eventually gave the, uh, who moderated your, your quiz shows, number one? I moderated them. How did you get your questions? Where did you... Well, I, I made up most of them. Uh, I had the access to the ship's library. Mm -hmm. Peggy Cat. Uh, number three, <clears throat> did you have commercials like, now hear this, get those decks clean? I mean, did you have commercials? No. no well, we number one, was the captain of your ship as William Paley is to us? I mean, was he the real boss? He uh, certainly was. <laughs> and number two, did he have complete approval? Like, uh, you know, he, had a, he told you what to put on? Or did, did you no, ma'am, it was live and spontaneous. What? Spontaneous. Oh, that was very he nice. He would chat with me afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> number th number three, what is the sunshine hour? I don't know. Number two, do you know what the sunshine hour is? I think you mean sundown, no, okay. restricted to the ship. <laughs> That's it. Time for you now to mark your ballots. So mark them at once, if you will, please. Gosh, I don't see Mark them without call. change and without any consultation. Just vote now on what information you have. Vote for number one, number two, or number three. Our team of challengers will, of course, be awarded $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? No, oh. not slowpoke. Not slowpoke over there? <laughs> All right. I have this Tom. enormous brain, you see, that I have, <laughs> and it takes a while. Well, this oh. enormous brain figured out that I should vote for number two. Well, I, I thought that he was uh, very uh, hip and a uh, and lot of fun and funny. I think he would be extremely entertaining to have aboard a ship. I'd like to hear him uh, on TV or myself. So. Peggy Cat. Well, thank you. Uh, number two is very funny and witty and everything. But the Sunshine Hour is something that they really have in the Navy. I think where they sing songs to one another and everything. And so I voted for number one. They do have the Sunshine Hour. Can you oh, believe it? That sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you don't know so much about the Navy, Kitty. Uh, oh, no. Kitty. Peggy, excuse me. Oh, I'm very nervous tonight, friends. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Number two is hilarious. He should have his own show on CBS. But he, he looks like his name is Murphy to me. I can't picture him. <laughs> I voted for number three because he has a tan, and all stars have a tan. <laughs> Kitty. Well, I should have voted for number two because he was adorable. But I voted for number three because I think that the captain of the ship would trust him more than number two, who might be a little bit outrageous. <laughs> All right, there we have it with the votes all in of the minds made up. Now, let's find out which one of these three gentlemen in truth is Lieutenant Robert Weinstein. Will the real Lieutenant Robert Weinstein please stand up? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Michael Stern. I'm a stockbroker with Bruns and Ornament and Company. <laughs> and number two, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? I am Robert Walker and I am the marketing administrator for the air conditioning division of American Standard. <laughs> well, in checking the score, we find you did well. There were two incorrect votes that you and Vigal Limited Casting, and that means twice $250 or $500, gentlemen. Thank you very much for starting us off on such a bright note. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> Meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Frank Schoonmaker. My name is Frank Schoonmaker. My name is Frank Schoonmaker. Please follow along again, if you will, please, panel. I, Frank Schoonmaker, am an authority on wines. I have written five books on the subject, including the recently published Encyclopedia of Wine. 
Twice a year, I refresh my knowledge of the world's greatest vineyards by traveling over 30,000 miles to the wine countries of France, Germany, Italy, Spain, and California. In an average 12-month period, I taste and judge over 4,000 different wines. I own my own wine importing company and am the only non-French member of the French Wine Academy. The United States is rapidly becoming more and more wine conscious. And I estimate that throughout the country on New Year's Eve, corks will pop on more than two million bottles of champagne. Signed, Frank Schoonmaker. <laughs> Gentlemen, all claim to be Frank Schoonmaker. And we'll start this cross-examination with Kitty Carlisle. Thank Kitty? you, bud. Uh, number one, I don't mean to be impertinent, but when you taste a great deal of wine, do you ever become a little lightheaded, shall we say? No, I'm afraid not, because I never swallow it. You never swallow it. Oh. Number two, what is... It's such a pity. What's the, what's the most expensive wine in the, that you've ever tasted? The most expensive? Yeah. Um, a famous one in France, Chateaubriand. How much was it? Well, uh, if you want to buy it in America, of course, it's much more expensive. Over there, it was about four dollars and a half a bottle. Well, that's the most expensive, really. Number three, does, um, does Don't Fear in Your Champagne come in a crystal bottle? No, it comes in an old-fashioned, special shape bottle. Number one, does it never come in a, in a crystal bottle? Not that I know of. Uh, number two, where is the most... Tom Poston. Thank you. Uh, uh, number three, is uh, Talbot, is that a Chateau wine? Yes, it's uh, classified, fourth classified growth of Saint-Julien. Gosh. Number three, again, do you know what kind of wine it is, uh, traditionally speaking, I mean, in the largest sense? Well, it's a red Bordeaux. Thank you. Number two, uh, do you know what Saumur is? I've asked that question on this show three times so far, and I haven't gotten an answer that satisfied me. Have you ever heard of Saumur? S-A-U-M-U-R, Saumur? Yes, it's a very special wine made out of a very rare white grape. Number one, what is the quality of that wine that's outstanding, unusual? I would say that it... Uh, would remind you a good deal of the Beaujolais. Number one, uh, again about tasting wine. When you Peggy Cass. Thank you. Number three, uh, Mowat and Chandon run a chateau where people can have lunch and stay. Do you know the name of it? Offhand, I can't remember. It's just north of Epernay. Thank you. Uh, number one, are you a Chevalier de Tassevra? No, I am not. Thank you. Uh, number two, what kind of a wine is, what color is Cassie? Q-U-I-N-C-Y. Yes, it's pronounced can C. That's what that's I said. Right. Yes, yeah. that's right. Gee whiz. Well, that's odd, but uh, it's spelled Q-U-I-N-C-Y, but pronounced can C. Well, what color if is it? If you drink too much of it, you can't, but I mean. <laughs> but is it a red wine or a white wine? It's a white wine. Thank you very much. Very delicate, very rare. Uh, rare? Mm -hmm. Not in my house. Uh, tell me, <laughs> number three at Auspice de Bon, do they auction off uh, clarets or, or burgundies? Burgundies. Thank you. Orson Bean. Uh, number one, uh, uh, complete this phrase on the little label that is found on certain bottles of wine, a Frank Schoonmaker... Selection. All right. Number two, uh, the famous wine company, Sherry Wine and Spirits, recently merged. Do you know with whom they merged? Lehman. Well, who? Lehman. All right. Number two, uh, uh, there is a, a thing which I bought, which I flipped over. It's a, it's a gizmo to open wine with, and you press a button, it's called a core case or something, and a cartridge of frizzy water opens it by making a pressure between the top of the wine and the bo yeah. bottom of the cork. Does, I hear conflicting reports, does this hurt the uh, quality of the wine? Or Not rather? particularly, if it's done just right, no. If it's done, well, just that's it. Time. time for you now to mark your ballots and vote, so please do so, panel, immediately, without consultation and without changing once you've marked it. Vote, if you will, now for number one. Number two, or number three? Well, ballots all marked very well. Tom, for whom did you vote? Uh, I voted for that jolly, charming man in the center there, number two, uh, for two reasons. Summer is made from a white, white, white grape, or at least it's white wine, but it's unlike uh, other wines in that it has a sparkling quality of its own. And Taubo, I think, is a Medoc in its largest sense. Now, may, it may be even larger and be a, another kind, too, but I thought it was number two. Peggy Katz. Well, number two knew about Cassie and everything, but that, sh that chateau is just north of Epernay, so I voted for three. 
Arson Bean. I'm really torn. They all, number three knows everything about wine. So does number one. Number two uh, put me off a little. He, he looks like Bacchus, the god of wine. So I figured maybe, <laughs> maybe it's number two. But on the other hand, he said that Chateau Brion is, is the most expensive wine. Well, I've heard that. You tell me that, And anyway, it's a steak. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but, but then he won me over again when he, when he made that joke about if you drink too much, can't see, you can't see. And guys in the business always have trade jokes. But then he lost me again. <laughs> but I still voted for him. <laughs> so you voted for number two. Yes. Uh, I'd like to ask you a favor. Would you, would you just repeat your reason? <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. I voted for number one because he knew about Sherry merging with uh, Lehman Brothers, and um, they were all, I'm sure they're all in the wine business. Well, Either that or they all love it, because yeah. they're marvelous. All right, well, there we have it with the votes all in again, and minds made up, varied but made up. Let's find out now which one of these gentlemen in truth is Frank Schoonmaker. Will the real Frank Schoonmaker please stand up? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. You may be seated. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is William Balsall, and I'm a retired banker. <laughs> and number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Phil Carney, and I'm a cruise director with the Homeline Steamship Agency. Phil Carney looks vaguely familiar to you. It could be because he reminds you somewhat of his brother, Art Carney. Yeah. <laughs> Although nobody ever compared Art to Bacchus, I don't think. <laughs> Checking the score, gentlemen, we find you did well. There were three incorrect votes, three times $250, $750 coming your way. And may it bring you great joy. Good night, and God bless you. Let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is June Douglas. My name is June Douglas. My name is June Douglas. Follow along again with your copies of this story panel, if you will. I, June Douglas, am an examiner for the FAA, the Federal Aviation Agency. I am licensed to give both private and commercial pilot tests in single and multi-engined aircraft. I give the test about five times a week, and it is a most exacting one. First of all, I give the applicant a 45-minute oral examination and an on-the-ground pre-flight test. In the air, the test includes standard air maneuvers such as spirals, stalls, chandelles, and pylon eights. Then comes the engine shutdown to determine whether the pilot can fly the plane without benefit of power. During the test, I make the pilot simulate almost every possible emergency situation, including landings with one engine, no engine, short approach, one wheel, crosswind, and so forth. I am a past winner of the Powder Puff Derby, and just this year won the all-women's international air race. I also fly helicopters and gliders. And to break the monotony, I'm learning to skydive. Signed, June Douglas. <laughs> so, panel, these three ladies all claim to be June Douglas. We'll start with Tom Poston, if we may, Tom. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, number two in multi-engine. How can you tell if your engines are out of sync? You can hear them. Number one, uh, uh, let me ask you, if you're making a, a crosswind approach uh, and the wind is coming across your runway from the right, which wing is down? Your right wing. Uh, number three, can you make a crosswind approach with both wings level? And if so, how do you do that? You can by crabbing. Thank you. Number two, uh, would you describe the nature of a chandelle for our listening audience? Well, it's just a big, fat climbing turn, really with a 180-degree change of direction. Number one, how would you, uh, what, what's the best thing to do to come out of a, a stall? 
if you're in a spin, if you stall into a spin, how do you come out of it? Well, you put your nose down first. And what about the airplane's nose now? <laughs> Peggy Cat. Thank you, but uh, number two, if you take them out and make them and test them on landing with no engines, don't you lose a lot of applicants that way? <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, you know, number three, you say, okay, now land with just one engine. Is it the support fellow have to do that? Um, yes, you watch him. <laughs> sure watch him. I have my hands on the wheel. Number one, how many solo hours must you fly before you get your license? Depends. The minimum is eight hours. It can even go to 15. I'd be up there for uh, months. Num number three, what's a steerman? It's a very old biplane that they used to use for acrobatics. Thank you. Orson Bean. Uh, number two, uh, who is Floyd Gibbons? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know. Number three, Floyd Gibbons? I'm sorry, I don't know. Number one, Wiley Post. Wiley Post is yeah. a wonderful old-time pilot. Yeah, what did he used to wear on his eye, number one? A patch. So did Floyd Gibbons. That's the one thing they had in common. It's funny how it worked out. <laughs> number two, uh, do you work with a chute when you, uh, when you, uh, give, when you go up with a, a novice? Uh, you wear a chute? You mean on flight tests? No. Yeah. In other words, if, uh, if he goes down, you go down with him, or can you, do you have dual controls? You have dual controls. Uh, have you ever had to slug anybody like they do in the movies? One time I saw Chester Morris give somebody such as that's number <laughs> skydiver, it was called. Uh, Kitty Carlisle. Yes, number three. Do they ever freeze to the stick, as the saying goes? Yes. Out of terror? Yes. Number two, what is the difference between a commercial pilot's license and a private pilot's license in terms of hours of, of study? Well, the private takes about 40 hours and the commercial takes about 200 hours. Number one, is there any difference between commercial pilot's license and instrument flying? Yes, there is. One's instrument and one is a commercial. How long does that take, the instrument flying? The instrument flying? Flight, yeah, on where test. you're going. Test. Oh, the test. Uh, it would be the same as a commercial, the length of time. Thank you. Number three, who taught you to fly? Uh, an assortment of instructors. <laughs> That's it. Time to mark your ballots, if you will, please. So mark them now. Mark them without consultation and, of course, without any change. Vote for number one, number two, or number three. Ballots all marked. All right. Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, uh, number three may not be June Douglas, but she certainly is a flyer. <laughs> Uh, uh, I, I would say that uh, no one who didn't fly would ever know what it means to crab in for a crosswind landing, so I voted for number three. Peggy Cat. I voted for number three, because I never heard the word crabbing in my life, except, you know, when you're yelling at somebody, so it must be right. <laughs> Orson Bean. I'm amazed to hear the others all voted for number three. I voted for number three, but I figured I'd be the only one. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. I voted for number three. Well... I don't see number three doing skydiving with that beautiful coiffure, but maybe she does. Anyway, I voted for her. Well, that makes it unanimous. You haven't done that in quite a little while, okay? <laughs> Let's find out now whether you're right or wrong as we learn which of these ladies in truth is June Douglas. Will the real June Douglas please stand up? <laughs> Thank you very much. What in heaven's name has started you doing this skydiving? Oh, I took it up as a practical joke on a friend of mine. <laughs> practical joke on whom? Well, on my fiancé. He's a skydiver, and I went out of the airplane after him one day. <laughs> <laughs> well, he knows he's wanted, at least. That must be. Number one, what is your real name, and what do you really my do? My name is Louise Hyde, and I'm a housewife in New York City. Three, you got all the votes. What is your real name and what do you do? My name is Jerry Gardiner. I'm a freelance fashion illustrator from New London, Connecticut. <laughs> Checking the score, we don't have to. It's a thousand percent for number three. That means all wrong. So one thousand dollars, ladies, comes your way. Thank you very much for being with us and gracing our show. Good night and God bless you. <laughs> Happy New Year, panel, and a Happy New Year to all of you. Good night.
Thank you, Bud. Happy That's all we have time for tonight. And so good night to you as well. Don't forget, of course, to be with us again next week. I'll see you tomorrow afternoon on the daytime show. But in the meantime, don't you forget to tell the truth. Bye. <laughs> Hazel puts diplomacy to the test when she tries to establish rapport with her boss and almost loses her job. Tune in for the fun of it when Shirley Booth stars as Hazel later tonight in color. To Tell the Truth has been brought to you by this stand tablet for relief of cold, misery, sinus congestion. This stand to help unclog congestion that fills your head with cold, misery. Johnny Olson speaking, the program...